This is 2016 to 17 Introduction to Mechanical and Electrical Engineering exam, question three on the mechanics exam. Uh, this question, uh, part A, is about calculating support reactions for a loaded beam, and it's a fairly standard kind of question. And part B is about calculating the forces which must act on an object if that object is in equilibrium and it's also a fairly standard kind of question so um, both of these are well worth understanding and practicing. Um, 3a the beam in question looks like this uh, that's point B and point D and there is a uh, load there F2 and a load here F1 and we're told F1 equals 20 kilonewtons F2 equals 40 kilonewtons and we can mark some distances onto this beam this is 2 meters from A to B uh, 6 meters from B to C and another 2 meters there mark on that we're calling this point A and this point C. Um, so that's the the setup of the problem and then what we want to find are the reaction forces at B and D. So I mean just looking at this in the um, simplest way to start with we can look at vertical equilibrium the beam isn't moving and so it must be in equilibrium which means that forces acting downwards that's F1 plus F2 equals forces acting upwards that's the reaction force at B plus the reaction force at D um, these are all forces even though I'm using F for some of them and R for others I'm just using R to indicate it's a reaction from the support you could have called it FB and FD if you preferred um, and F1 plus F2 uh, equals 60 kilonewtons we know that's uh, this information here 20 plus 40 kilonewtons 60 kilonewtons but that's not quite enough because we don't know how much of that is the reaction at B and how much of that is the reaction at D so we have to think about moments and when we take moments in any problem a bit like this what we want to do is eliminate the force one of the unknowns and just leave ourselves with the other unknown if we take moments about the point at B the reaction at B is zero distance away so this force creates zero moment because the distance is zero so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to take moments about B then we don't have to account for the um, the force the reaction force at B and we'll have an equation which only involves the reaction force at D okay so this is the notation that I'm going to use to say I'm interested in clockwise moments about B now what I have to do is find for each of the forces involved the distance from B and the magnitude of the force multiply those together and add them up and say they sum to zero so F1 uh, uh, I'll start with F1 it acts 2 meters away from B so F1 times 2 and it's tending to cause an anti-clockwise rotation about B it's turning things this way so I'm going to make that negative um, we said the force at B acts straight through the point here so it's not going to create any moment I guess just to make it clear I can say that's plus RB times 0 if I want to um, but that that term will disappear um, plus F2 times 6 so this force F2 is 6 meters away act 6 meters away um, minus RD times 8 so the reaction here at D is 8 meters away and it's the the reaction force is pushing upwards and so it's tending again to turn things anti-clockwise and so as long as I keep all my anti-clockwise moments negative and all my clockwise moments positive that should all sum to zero um, putting in some numbers that is minus 20 times 2 so minus 40 plus 0 
plus 240 minus 8rd equals 0. And that's the same as saying 8rd equals 200. I'll just put in these arrows to indicate each line follows on from the previous line. So we're saying rd equals 25 kilonewtons. Um, I could now just use this information and this information eliminate and I find rb equals 35 kilonewtons. I'll just quickly go through anyway and calculate um, using moments about d. If we take clockwise moments about d, and I'll do this quicker than I did the last one, uh, we've got f1 times 10, uh, negative because it's anti-clockwise, plus rb times 8, minus f2 times 2 equals 0. Again, the reaction force at d has no effect on the moment about d. Um, and that gives us uh, minus... 200 plus 8rb um, minus 80 equals 0. And that means that 8rb equals 280. Rearranging. And that means that rb equals 280 divided by 8 which is 35 kilonewtons. So those are our two answers. The reaction at D is 25 kilonewtons and the reaction at B is 35 kilonewtons. And I can check and I can say, okay, do they both add up to um, 60? Because that's what they need to do to give us vertical equilibrium. And the answer is yes, they do. So that's 3A done. Uh, question 3b, just to remind you, it's got a diagram that looks like this. So I'll reproduce that diagram and then we'll go from there. I recommend whenever you're working on engineering problems that you draw out your diagram nice and clearly. It's just a very good way of getting things straight in your own head. Um, so. Now that I've drawn my diagram, we know F3 equals 50 newtons and theta equals 35 degrees in the question. And we're asked, what do F1 and F2 have to equal then if the object is in equilibrium? If the object is at rest, Then equilibrium says horizontal forces must balance. And vertical forces must balance. We're not going to worry about moments here because we're looking at things that are acting around a single point. And so it's going to be easiest if I convert F3 into horizontal and vertical components. Let's just draw out the triangle for that. Uh, this is vertical, this is horizontal, this is F3, and this is 35 degrees. And F3 uh, equals 50 newtons. So we can say... Um, sine 35 equals opposite over hypotenuse which here equals V over F3 so V equals F3 times sine 35 equals we know F3 is 50 so it's 50 times sine 35 is 28.7 newtons and cos 35 equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which equals h over f3 here. That's the adjacent side. That's the hypotenuse. And therefore, h equals f3 cos 35. Which is 
0.95, so that's 41.0 to three significant figures. And now what we have to do is say um, vertical equilibrium tells us forces acting up must equal forces acting down. Well, that means this is a force acting upwards. I'll just get my arrows on here so it's absolutely clear which way everything's acting. V is a force acting upwards and F2 is a force acting downwards and they have to be equal. So F2 equals V which equals uh, 28.7 newtons and looking at horizontal equilibrium forces to the left have to equal forces to the right so F1 equals H which equals 41.0 newtons. And those are your answers. F2 equals 28.7 newtons and F1 equals 41.0 newtons. So the, the key principle there is equilibrium and it's often easiest to think of equilibrium in horizontal and vertical terms when we're dealing in two dimensions. So anything that's not horizontal or vertical, break it up into its horizontal and vertical components and then solve. The final part of the question C says what would happen if F1 and F3 are kept constant F2 is increased by 5 newtons. Um, well in that case that's like having this situation and then adding on an extra 5 newton force downwards. So what we would have is an unbalanced force because all of a sudden we wouldn't be in vertical equilibrium. Forces acting downwards would be 5 newtons higher than forces acting downwards. So we say there's an unbalanced force and an unbalanced force will cause an object to accelerate and this is now Newton's second law so it's accelerating according to F equals MA and if you knew its mass you know that there's an unbalanced force of 5 Newtons acting straight downwards and so you could calculate its acceleration and that acceleration will be in the direction of F2 because that's the force that we've increased here. So that's the direction of the unbalanced force. And that is question three complete.